Hi, it's Dr. Z. In this video, I will review z-scores. By the end of this video, you'll be able to calculate z-scores using two different formulas and be able to compare two different scores in a distribution. Please refer to the corresponding handout for this video and feel free to pause the video at any time to take notes. A z-score is also called a standard score because it provides a standard scale of measurement for any variable. Calculating a z-score for a specific x-score helps with understanding or interpreting that x-score compared to the entire data set. This is the first step into inferential statistics. This formula here is the formula we will use to calculate z-scores, and this is our example. With word problems, I want to encourage students to get in the habit of writing out the key values, and it'll help you with organizing your information. So a student reported a stress level of x equals 91. How stressed out is a student compared to the group with a mean of 80 and an SD of 7? What is the student's z-score? So we're looking for z-score. So let's start with our formula. z equals x minus m over SD. And then all we have to do is plug in the numbers into this formula. x is 91, mean is 80, and SD is 7. So let's use math. 91 minus 80 gives us 11, and 11 divided by 7 gives us a 1.57, but what's most important here is it's a plus 1.57. That plus tells us that our score is above the mean. In other words, the student's z-score was above the mean by 1.57 standard deviations. Now we will learn how to graph z-scores on a normal distribution. A z-score reflects the number of standard deviations that a score x is above or below the mean. Therefore, we can graph the mean and the standard deviation of a distribution on the same axis as the corresponding z-scores. Let's use the information from the previous example. The student reported a x of 91. The class had a mean of 80 and an SD of 7. And then we just calculated the z-score, which was a plus 1.57. So let's draw this on the distribution. So our mean is always in the middle, and then our mean here is 80. One standard deviation above the mean is here, and then two standard deviations above the mean. This is one standard deviation below the mean, and this is two standard deviations below the mean. If this is one standard deviation, we would write SD equals 7, and 80 plus 7 gives us 87. And if we were to do two standard deviations, this X score would be a 94. So if you're going to do it below the mean, 80 minus 7 gives us 73. And then if we go one more standard deviation, it'd be 66. So this is what the Z, sorry, this is what the X scores would be if we graphed it. But if we kind of just drag that line down all the way down to the Z score, we know that a Z score at the mean is always zero and one standard deviation above and two standard deviations. Now let's go below. So now this is a Z axis with our Z scores on there. 
if we were to draw an axis or draw a little dot right on the 87, 87, if we put another dot on the plus one, you'll see that a score of 87 equals a z score of plus one. These two dots would line up exactly. After calculating z scores and graphing z scores, let's do it in reverse. Let's reverse what we just learned about z scores. And we're going to calculate the x score when we're only given the z score. You can use the z score formula from the previous slide to calculate the corresponding x score. However, this formula here is a modified and easier version of the formula to use. So let's do this example and remember what I said. Let's take out the important information. We have a mean of 50. We have an SD of 8. They want to know what is the X score for a Z score of a negative 0.75. So in other words, we're solving for this, we're solving for the X score. So let's use this formula that we have here. X equals Z times SD plus M. And at this point, we're just gonna plug in our information. We have a Z of a negative 0.75. Don't forget about that negative score. We have an SD of eight and we have a mean of 50. So a negative 0.75 times eight gives us a negative six plus 50. So the number one mistake is students want to add 50 plus six, but no, this is a negative score. So we actually subtract the negative six from 50 and we get X equals 44. So the X score corresponding to a Z score of negative 0.75 is X equals 44. You now know how to calculate Z scores using two different formulas. These two additional practice examples show different ways that the modified formula from the previous slide can be used to solve for standard deviation and mean. As a friendly reminder, when doing word problems, I encourage students to write out the key values first. So with this question, we have a mean of 65 with an X score of 59. This corresponds with a Z score of a negative two, and they want to know what the standard deviation is. So let's use the previous formula that was really helpful in solving. So we're just gonna plug in the numbers, right? 59 equals 65 plus negative two times SD, right? So that's a lot of numbers there. What are we, where do we start? Well, let's get everything over to the left side. So we just have SD. So let's subtract negative 65 from both sides. So then we're left with 59 minus 65 gives us a negative six. Then all we have left over here is a negative two times SD. What do we need to do to get the SD by itself? Well, we need to divide both sides by a negative two. So these two are canceled out and then all we got left on this side is our standard deviation here and a negative six divided by a negative two gives us actually a positive three so then this answer is a positive three so standard deviation equals three so let's go to our next example so what information do we have here we have sd of four and we have an X of 33 that corresponds to a Z of plus 1.50. And they want to know 
what is the mean on this anxiety scale? So again, same formula as before. So X is 33. We don't know the mean, so we just put the mean there. We have a Z of plus 1.5 times our standard deviation of 4. So we have a 33 over here. Mean, what is a 1.50 times 4? That gives us a plus 6. What do we need to do to get the mean all by itself? Subtract negative 6 from both sides. So then all we have left over here is a mean, right? And 33 minus 6 is 27. So then our final answer is a 27. At this point, I hope that you're confident in calculating z-scores, regardless of which formula you use. So I want to take it up a notch. Because z-scores provide a standard scale of measurement, it can be used to compare scores from different types of tests with each other. Basically, z-scores allow you to compare apples and oranges by, well, converting them to the same type of fruit, let's say pineapples. In this example here, we're comparing SpongeBob and Patrick. SpongeBob had a microbiology exam, but Patrick had a statistics exam. So two different exams, two different scores. We can't really compare the two. In other words, SpongeBob's score on the microbiology exam is an apple, <laughs> and Patrick's score on the statistics exam is an orange. We cannot compare apples to oranges, so we need to turn both exam scores into the same fruit, or we need to turn them into a pineapple. So how do we do that? Well, we just learned about z-scores. So when these two different exam scores are converted into z-scores, we now have two pineapples with which to compare. So let's break it down into its two parts. I'm going to put SB over here for SpongeBob. We have X equals 77 with a mean of 70 and an SD of 4. Let's plug it into the formula. Z equals X minus M over SD. So we have an X of 77, a mean of 70 divided by four. So 77 minus 70 is seven. Seven divided by four is what? Is a plus 1.75. So in other words, SpongeBob scored 1.75 standard deviations above the mean. But that's SpongeBob. We got to do Patrick. So over here we do Patrick. Patrick had a score of 84 with a mean of 80 and an SD of 2. Let's plug it into the formula. So we have 84 minus 80 divided by 2. 84 minus 80 is 4. 4 divided by 2 gives us a z-score of plus 2. Right? So these are our two final answers. But the question is not what were their z-scores. The question is who did better on their tests last week, right? So who did better, SpongeBob or Patrick? If we were to graph them on a normal distribution, remember our z-score at the center is always zero, and this is a plus one, and this is a plus two. Well, if we were to graph SpongeBob, SpongeBob fell right about here at a plus 1.75. But where did Patrick fall? Patrick fell above it, higher than it. So our final answer here, and I'll slide this up a little bit, is that Patrick, has a higher z-score than SpongeBob. So Patrick did better. Now, if you remember, 
SpongeBob lives where? SpongeBob lives in a pineapple under the sea. Now do you get my silly reference to pineapples? Have a great week, guys.